Do you want to make more money in 2021? Here are the top five most profitable food businesses in 2021. So make sure to keep watching. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you build a thriving small business and a profitable food business. Out of curiosity, I want to know, why is it that you want to start a food business? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, one of the most difficult question when it comes to starting a food business is, what item should I be selling? There are millions of items out there, and yet, which one makes the most money? And that's the reason why we created this video for you, to show you and share with you the top five most profitable food items that you can start in 2021. Now, let's dive right in. The number one most profitable item in 2021 are cookies. Why cookies? Because everyone needs something sweet, something of a comfort, indulgence at their own home, something like a snack, something like a gift. And cookies is the perfect item that satisfies everything. Now, when I'm talking about cookies, we're not talking about regular cookies that you can just bake at home. We're talking about specialty cookies. We're talking about vegan cookies. We're talking about really indulgent, flavor-packed, ingredient-packed cookies that are a little bit more different. Now, the pros of starting a cookie business is that everyone loves cookies. My daughter loves cookies, I love cookies, my dad loves cookies. So that means that you are capturing a much wider audience. And on top of that, you can actually gift it out to your friends and family, showing and sharing your love at the same time. Now, when it comes to the startup cost of a cookie business, it is a lot lower than opening up a traditional restaurant or any type of food business because all you need to do is have an oven and you're pretty much good to go. Typically, it can start with less than 10,000. And on top of that, if you really wanted to bootstrap this business, you can even start this at your own home. And the real reason why I really love cookies is that they have high margins. And typically speaking, we're looking at times five to times six, your cost of goods sold. And on top of that, it's just so much easier when you batch make a ton of different cookies for you to save on labor costs. Now, when it comes to the skill level to create cookies, it definitely varies. Um, I mean, the barrier to enter and to create these items are definitely low. To master the skill set takes a lot of years, but it is something that you can get started and hone your craft in as time goes on. Now, when it comes to the cons of creating a cookie business, everyone knows mom's recipe. Everyone has a recipe that they think they can make really good cookies. And that's the reason why for you to stand out, for you to charge people for cookies, you must stand out. So as an example, you can stand out with making really, really good vegan cookies, or you can make some really good gooey cookies at the same time. Another big pitfall of running a cookie business is the low average ticket price. What do I mean by that? Let's say if you want to make a thousand dollars in your business, how many individual cookies do you need to sell in order for you to get there? A lot of cookies. Whereas if you build your business correctly, let's say if you bundle your cookies in packages of six, you package it nicely, slap your logo on it, have good branding, have a good marketing presence, then you can sell this at a premium. That would get you to a thousand dollars much quicker if you do it right. Now lastly, creating a cookie business is not a walk in the park. It is relatively labor intensive. It is a grind, you need to wake up early. And on top of that, if you're doing this at home and if you have high volume, that means that you can only bake so many cookies at once. That means your oven is turning 24 seven until you are able to afford a bigger oven, a bigger mixer. This will become a grind for you. The next most profitable item is Fried chicken. Fried chicken stores are popping up left, right, no tomorrow in Vancouver every single week. And they are the most popular in 2021 because once again, this is a really great comfort food. Every type of culture has their own version of fried chicken. For example, Japanese has their own fried chicken, which is called karage and it is using potato batter, whereas American fried chicken is very, very different uh, because they use beard battered. So fried chicken is a universal language amongst all cultures. And that's the reason why it is not only the most demanding, but also profitable item in 2021. The pros of running a chicken joint is that everyone loves fried chicken. It goes across 
multi-cultured. And on top of that, it is highly repeatable. What does that mean? That means that I can eat fried chicken Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'm still not tired of fried chicken. Now, in comparison to a full-scale restaurant or a dine-in spot, fried chicken joints are relatively lower in startup costs. Why is that the case? Because you don't need that much equipment to start a fried chicken joint. And on top of that, you don't need a lot of space either because when people buy fried chicken, they usually buy it to eat at home. They wanna be able to share this with their friends at home during game nights or late nights cravings. In addition to that, once you have your battered and your recipe fine-tuned, the skill set to create fried chicken is really little to none. It is super easy for you to hire someone to actually make their fried chicken. And that's the reason why you also don't need to spend a lot of money hiring for very specialized chefs to create this item for you. Now the cons of running a fried chicken joint is that it is very, very competitive because once again, everyone loves fried chicken and that's why a lot of people are in this space. So what can you do to stand out? You must differentiate yourself from your competitors. Now what I mean by that, for example, Juke Fried Chicken, they focus on vegan fried chicken. That is a really great way for them to differentiate amongst the crowd because they focus on vegan fried chicken that is healthy to eat. For you, choose a way and choose a demographic that you're trying to serve and be able to meet them where they are. Now, the next most profitable item is restaurant meal kits. And this is really catered to the people that already have a restaurant and they're really tunneled vision into focusing on their own food delivery. They're looking at their menu item very vertically without being creative. Now, when done right, you can actually create, use the same ingredients that you already have and create meal kits to serve the same demographic in a different way. And that is also another very extremely profitable way of making another revenue stream. Now, as I was saying, why is this such a beautiful model? It is because you can use the same ingredients that you have already purchased, if you have a restaurant, to actually repackage them as meal kits. That means you're not buying anything additional and you're using the same ingredients. That would save you on your spoilage. And on top of that, it will always keep your ingredients fresh. Selling meal kits, you also can ensure the quality assurance is there because as opposed to selling your food items out the door and by the time the food gets to your customer's place, it might become soggy, it might have condensation and it might just be cold and it might be a clump. And that's the reason why when you're selling meal kits, the quality is always there because everything is already pre-packaged but not yet made. And because you don't need to make the items, you actually create more margins for yourself. You don't need to have that much labor for you to prepare the packages for you to send out as meal kits. And that's the reason why it is actually higher margins than a lot of your other items. And on top of that, when you're selling meal kits, usually you're selling meal kits in servings of two to four. And when you sell servings to two to four, you end up making more money because you're serving more people in that one box. Now, when it comes to staffing, this is a no brainer. All you have to do is to make sure you have the recipe, all your sauces created and all your food ingredients all rationed out. And that means you don't really need a high skilled labor to create these meal kits. And that's one of the reasons why I love restaurant meal kits as a stream of revenue so, so much. Now, finally, the reason why I really, really enjoyed this item is because it is super versatile. Whether you're selling pizza, spaghetti, sushi, tacos, or even alcohol, you can actually pre-package them into meal kits, into DIY kits that you can sell. That means that it goes across the board as long as you're creative. Now, when it comes to the cons of selling restaurant meal kits is that it is not a regular repeatable item that you're purchasing because sometimes you might feel like a meal kit would be a good idea, let's say for Valentine's or milestones. However, it is not something you order on a daily basis. And that's the reason why we shouldn't be banking on this item as a repeatable item. It should just be an additional revenue stream. And on top of that, you do need to spend some money in educating your guests and on top of that, marketing this item. And that requires some work and some creativity. If you guys enjoyed this video and find value 
end this video, make sure you guys smash the like button and let me know this is the type of content that you enjoy. Now, back to regular programming. Now, the next most profitable item in 2021 are burgers. Everyone loves a good, fat, juicy burger, and that's why the reason why it made it on the list. Now, let's dive into the pros. Now, the pros of running a burger joint is that the margins can be very, very healthy if done right and when done right. When done right, the margins can go up to 80%. And what do I mean by when done right? It means that when you're operating a burger joint, you must differentiate yourself as well. You must have an identity that actually differentiates you from your competitors, whether you be really focused on big, fat, juicy burgers or healthy vegan burgers. It is very, very important to identify that. And on top of that, you must market it accordingly. You must translate that values that you have to your customers and let them in to why and what you're creating and then you can package your burgers to sell them at a higher cost and thus achieving higher margins in addition to that this item allows you to be very versatile as well what do i mean by that aside from a vegan burger aside from a regular american burger there are bunless burgers there are rice burgers there are basically any kind of burgers that you can think of gourmet burgers and these are the ways that allow you to differentiate amongst your competitors. And when you're thinking about, well, how can I actually serve these burgers out? There are different business models that you can have as well, either a brick and mortar location or a food truck location, or even a cloud kitchen location as well. Now, when it comes to the cons of running a burger joint, like I was saying, competition is furious because once again, this is a very profitable item. And that's the reason why I highly recommend you to differentiate by being creative, by being able to translate and actually tell your customers what makes you different. A lot of restaurants that I go to have really, really good items, yet they don't know how to properly communicate their values and how they make their items and what really makes them different to their customers and thus losing out on a lot of sales. Now, as a final point, the startup cost of running a burger joint is definitely moderate. In comparison to a full-scale restaurant, you don't need a lot of space. However, the equipment that you need is also quite high up there. What I mean by that, you need to have a hooded fan, you need to have your grill, you need to deep fryer, all the refrigeration, ice machine, and all those good stuff as well. So definitely not as much as a full-scale restaurant, but the investment is still pretty moderate. Now, claiming the final spot of the top five most profitable items in 2021. Bubble tea, boba. This is a tapioca drink that took the world by storm until today, it is still very, very popular. Now, of course, the reason why this made it on the list is because it is very, very popular amongst all ages, amongst all cultures, but also, it is very easy to have quality control because when it comes to drinks, drinks is basically a chemical reaction. That means as long as you have all your volume and your equipment all down, then you are able to create a good cup of bubble tea. And not only is the quality easy to control, it also has a very low startup cost. The equipment that you need for this business model is literally a POS system, shakers, sugar dispenser, cup sealer, under counter cooler, stand up cooler, ice machine, and pretty much you are good to go. And on average, typically speaking, you're looking at less than $10,000 in equipment and you're good to go. And that's the reason why a lot of people are jumping into this business model. And on top of that, bubble tea is a grab and go type of item. And that's the reason why the space needed is very, very little. And because you are selling drinks, that means it's water plus whatever else you have, the margins are extremely high when done well. And on top of that, the high turnover rates of this item just makes it such a great model for any types of business owners out there. Now, to spill some beans to you, some people might be asking, what margins are we talking about? We're talking about up to 80 plus percent margins when done right. In addition to all those good stuff, also the skill set to require for you to make a good cup of bubble tea requires very low skilled labor. And once again, because they're following a formula to create these items, it is very easy to make this item. That means you can easily hire a high school student 
to create that drink for you. You don't need to spend a ton of money on high skilled labor. And on top of that, this industry has definitely evolved over the years. That means it's getting more and more versatile. For example, fruit tea drinks, cream foam drinks, slush drinks, or very sophisticated tea drinks are all a evolution of this business model. Now, when it comes to the cons of this business model, it is extremely, extremely competitive in this industry. And the reason why, once again, is because it is high margins and low startup costs. That's the reason why everyone wants a piece of the pie. Now, with this item, you do need to make sure that the location is right because once again, this item is more prominent in the Asian communities. And that's the reason why you must be able to choose a location that really serves the customers. And finally, it is selling drinks and thus it is low average ticket price. We're talking about five to seven dollars at the most when it comes to bubble tea. And that's the reason why you do need to sell a lot of bubble teas in order for you to be very profitable. And that's once again, why it's important for you to be at the right location. Now, if you want to learn more about how to create a bubble tea shop, definitely check out our in-depth video right here that walks you through the step-by-step -step process on creating a bubble tea shop. So there you go, friends, the top five most profitable food businesses in 2021. One of the biggest challenge when identifying your food business is having a plan and having clarity on what to do next. And which is the reason why I highly recommend to check out a free masterclass that we created in the link below. And it talks about how do you align your values with your customers. So then that way they become your loyal fans and how you can connect with them. And then we talk about strategies to explode in revenue. It is over an hour of free masterclass that you can attend, talks and gives you the blueprint to start a profitable business. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys smash the like button. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.